Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Sprint. So in this session of Geography, we shall discuss the origin of universe. So in the first topic, we have discussed the introduction to geography, the various branches of geography. In this session, we shall discuss the actual origin of universe. So which is the most accepted theory for the origin of universe? It is the actually the Big Bang theory. Earlier, there were theories like Nebular hypothesis, or other theories but this is the most accepted theory for the most of the scientists in the world so what is actually big bang theory how the stars are formed how the planets are formed we shall discuss in this topic hope you are ready so let's get started so first what is actually big bang theory so big bang theory is also called as expanding universe theory so in the years 1920s edwin hubble a scientist named edwin hubble so he said that the distance between the galaxies was increasing. That means the universe is expanding. Okay, that's why it is called as expanding universe theory. And he said that the galaxies velocity is directly proportional to the distance between them. Okay, so clear with this. So let's start what is the actual Big Bang theory. What are the stages of Big Bang theory? So I'll just illustrate an example. So there is a lot of theory here just I'll illustrate with an example so that you will easily understand okay so actually the Big Bang theory states that there the total universe was considered as a single matter was into a single atom okay so at one point of time at the time of Big Bang this tiny ball or single atom has suddenly exploded so that all the pieces of matter have moved from one place to another okay so this sudden explosion is called as the big bang okay at a at an age of 13.7 billion years ago okay so 13.7 billion years ago this big bang is, has actually started okay so this explosion has started actually so this explosion has started so that still it continues till date so every day the universe is expanding okay clear with this so some energy was converted into matter so from this tiny ball explosion because of the energy from the explosion some of the energy was converted into matter okay moving on to the next stage of big big bang that is after three minutes of the actual big bang the first atom has been created okay so there was a lot of temperature because there was infinite temperature and infinite density but there was very small volume of the universe so due to high temperatures it was slowly started to cool after the expansions okay so after generally three lakh years the big bang has slowly cooled down to act the temperature of 4500 kelvin okay slowly atomic energy was slowly started so that the atoms were formed so when the atoms were formed we have the actual stars planets all these things okay so big bang is nothing but it's it says the universe was actually a tiny ball so whole whole matter was into one ball so suddenly it was it has exploded so all the matter has got split and it is still moving till date okay so universe is continuously expanded as per the big bang theory proposed by edwin hubble okay so after this big bang theory so there was a small example given how this big bang was actually caused so suppose a person is blowing a balloon so first you mark some points on a balloon okay so now you are blowing a balloon okay so the distance between two points actually increases so he says the distance between the galaxies and stars distance between other objects in the space keep on increasing day by day that's why it is called as expanding universe hypothesis so this is the best example to illustrate the big bang theory okay then how were the stars formed actually so now the matter has split into different places now how the stars are formed how the planets are formed we shall see in this topic so first about stars so the distribution of matter was not even that means they were not evenly distributed at exact distances or if i say 10 kilometers every 
body should be placed at 10 kilometers only so this distribution even distribution was not done so there were difference in densities if there was one small size particles there was larger particles so difference in densities resulted in different gravitational forces higher the density of an object higher will be the gravitational force that's why earth will have more gravitation than the moon moon has g by 6 earth has g gravitational force okay higher the density of an object higher will be the gravitational force so difference in densities has caused difference in gravitational so when there are difference in gravitational force so one will be bigger star or one will be bigger planet or one will be bigger asteroid like that so difference in densities has resulted in difference in gravitational forces okay so as the stars were formed with the how the stars will be formed so when the actual matter gets attracted to the center part of the any body so it will form a actually solid core around a hydrogen lump of gas earlier we used to have only hydrogen gases okay so slowly this gas started to condense so when this gas slowly condenses it will form a solid giving rises to stars so these stars were actually formed five to six billion years ago okay actually earth was formed around 4.6 billion years ago okay clear with this so next moving on to the planet formation how a planet is formed and what is the actual difference between star and planet stars can emit their own light but planets cannot why because there is no chemical reaction taking place which gives light in the planets okay clear with this we shall discuss why stars twinkle all those things in the coming topics hope you are clear with the star formation just the condensation has taken place slowly the temperatures have cooled down and they have formed the matter clear with this then moving on how planets were formed okay so due to gravitational pull so the all the matter will be attracted towards center and it will form a core so slowly it will cool down and condense so that it will form a bigger body and it has formed as a planet actually these are called planetismals so all planetismals have gathered and formed a planet clear with this okay so they how they rotate generally rotating on its own axis is called rotation rotating about another body is called revolution okay why do the planets rotate because they were separated from the moving object actually the universe was a tiny ball okay they were separated from a moving object so to maintain the angular momentum they keep on rotating on their own axis then why they are making a revolution on, about another body like stars because the another star is pulling them sun is pulling towards the its center because of the gravitation between the sun and the earth so that's why the planets are rotating around a star and why they are actually in orbit why they should be going towards the sun right because sun is pulling but whenever they are they are in circular or movement one force acts outside the circular movement that is centrifugal force one force is pulling towards the center that is sun's gravitational force and centrifugal force is pulling outside so that's why earth will be in its orbit it will not fall out of its orbit so that's why planets will not fall out of their orbits clear with this so in this way the planets rotate and they revolve around a star and they do not emit light okay in the next topic we shall discuss how the planets are formed and what are the different planets in the solar system so thank you so much for watching we shall meet in the next session thank you